Hey there, and welcome back. In this section, we'll take a look at what's involved in defining a schema in Wavy 8. As you may know, a schema is the blueprint that defines the data structure for every class of objects in Wavy 8. Defining your schema correctly is crucial because it directly impacts how your data is stored and how it will react to various queries. So let's dive in. In this section, we'll cover several aspects that you can define through the schema, such as the metadata, data properties, the vectorizer, and module configurations. First, we have the metadata definition, where you can define names and descriptions for your classes and properties. Defining these will help you and others understand the data structure. For classes, we have class, which is required, and description, which is optional. For properties, we have name, which is required, and description, which is optional. Now let's talk about properties with data types. Your class definitions will include, no doubt, properties to populate with data, and each of these properties needs to have a specific data type, like text, number, geo-coordinates, boolean, and so on. If you leave them out, Wavy8 will infer them, but we do recommend that you specify them for more predictable results. Next is the vectorizer. This is a very important setting. The vectorizer determines which Wavy8 module will be used to generate vector embeddings for your class. For text objects, you'd usually select one of the text-to-vec modules, such as one for an inference API like Cohere, Hugging Face, OpenAI, or Palm. The module that you select has to be enabled in your Wavy8 instance. You can get a list of enabled modules for your Wavy8 instance like so to find out which modules are available and select one of them. Remember that WCS instances come pre-configured, so you don't need to manually enable them at your end. But you do need to select a vectorizer if you want Wavy8 to convert your data into vectors. You also have the option to set class and property level module configurations. Setting module configurations at the class level is used for customizing module behavior across the entire class. Likewise, module configurations at the property level customize module behavior per property. This way, you can decide whether you want to vectorize the class or property name, or even skip the whole property altogether. There are other settings for things like the indexes and replication, but don't worry, we'll cover these later on. You may think, why are there so many options? Well, remember that these settings directly impact how your data is stored and how they'll react to queries. So these options give you a great deal of control over how Wavy8 behaves in these situations. We'll learn the basics here, and you'll start to see how varying these settings impacts Wavy8's behavior as you go. And that's it for this introduction to defining a schema in Wavy8. After you're done with this section, you should have a better idea of how to create a schema and configure it to suit your needs. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.